Last week, I set out to do three potato side dish recipes because the holidays are coming up and I knew people would be looking for side dishes to serve with their holiday roasts. I did two of the potato dishes already. For my third one, I wanted to do scalloped potatoes. So I started looking through my cookbooks. I have a lot of cookbooks, almost no mention of scalloped potatoes. And I'm like, why not? They're so common. Well, enough research turned out that there is no such thing as a recipe for scalloped potatoes. It really just means that the potatoes, the slices of potatoes are arranged in an overlapping scallop pattern in your casserole dish. You can do anything you want as far as what goes in there with the potatoes. You can put in there marshmallows and peanut butter if you want. I did find a couple of recipes and Julia Child was the one who really made clear the problem. She said something like in one of her cookbooks, there are innumerable quote unquote authentic scalloped potatoes recipes. If you like something and you have a favorite recipe, that's your authentic recipe but you can pretty much do whatever you want. So what I did was I chose three that I thought I liked, and then I kind of cherry picked from all three, something that I thought would be the best in my recipe. So that's what I want to do today. My recipe for authentic scalloped potatoes. To explain my potatoes, I'm using Klondike Gold Dust Potatoes, which I understand to be a proprietary name for a golden potato like Yukon Gold. I have here between two and a quarter and two and a half pounds of potatoes. This is about a kilogram. I'm not going to use all of this. I'm going to use most of it because this is the casserole dish that I'm going to be using. I've used this before and I just know that that amount of potatoes is going to be a little bit too much for this dish. I went out to the shed and I got my mandolin or mandoline, depending on how you pronounce it. One of my encyclopedias says that both pronunciations are correct. This is basically a varied slicer. You can do julienne on this, crinkle cut, flat cut. I'm going to be using the flat slicer blade here, which is kind of sharp. So therefore, it comes with a pusher that you can use to keep your fingers safe. All right, let's see what happens here. I usually use my electric rotary cutter to do potatoes, but I'm going to do the mandolin today. And as you can see, it's not as pleasant to use. All right. So there are a couple of slices, and that is just about right. I want about an eighth of an inch or about three millimeters. Yes, I went back to my rotary cutter because this just works so much more quickly. It's so much more efficient than using a mandolin. If you got one of these, great. They are available on places like Amazon, but you can use a mandolin or mandoline. A couple of things worth mentioning. You notice I didn't peel my potatoes. These Klondike Gold Dust potatoes have such a thin skin that as long as they're clean and these are well washed, you can use them without peeling. The other thing I wanted to mention is I have a bowl of cold water in the sink and I took my slices and put them in that bowl just to keep them from turning brown. One thing I like about this recipe is that you make a sauce for it, a cheese sauce, and you start with a roux. So I'm heating a pan on the stove and what I have there is three tablespoons of butter. If you do things by weight, that's about 43 grams. I want to melt that in my pan. My butter has melted, so what I'm adding now is two tablespoons of flour. I'm going to turn my heat down on that because I don't need to brown this or anything. I'm going to stir this and cook this for about one minute just simply to get the raw flavor out of that flour. I cooked that for one minute on low heat, by the way. I don't need to brown it. I'm not making a golden roux. This is what they call a white roux. And I'm adding to this one and a half cups of, I'm actually using a mixture of half and a half or milk you can use and heavy cream. I'm gonna bring my heat back under that and bring this up to the boil. That one and a half cups is about 350 milliliters. You can use just milk. 
You could use heavy cream. I'm using a bit of both because I need to reserve some of my heavy cream for another recipe that I'm going to be doing later today. This is just coming up to a boil, reducing my heat a little bit. You can cook this for as long as you want to. Well, I shouldn't say as long as you want to. It's like when you make a bechamel, you cook your white sauce, which is what this is. This is a white sauce. You can cook it for up to 10 minutes to get it as thick as you want. I'm not going to thicken this too much. By the way, a white sauce is a mother sauce because from here you can do all kinds of things. You could add um, Parmesan cheese and make an Alfredo sauce. What I have, I'm going to turn my heat off actually because I'm done with the cooking. I have some cheddar cheese. I started off with one and a half cups, which was four ounces or 113 grams of cheddar cheese and I'm putting in about two-thirds of that into this white sauce and I'm just gonna stir 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 until this is all melted and blended in just like you would when you were making an Alfredo sauce that's starting to blend in I'm gonna put some black pepper in there a pinch of salt not a whole lot of salt and then I took some leaves off of some thyme that I have in my rosemary garden in my herb garden outside and I'll continue to stir this until I'm satisfied that that cheese is all blended in now this sauce is looking really good nice and smooth it's obvious that the cheese is all melted and blended in just so that you know I used mild cheddar cheese in this you can use sharper cheese if you want i happen to prefer the flavor of mild cheddar cheese so this sauce now is ready to go i'm ready to start layering my potatoes in this dish but before i do i'm going to butter it well okay and then i've drained my potatoes this bottom section, bottom layer, you don't have to be fussy about. I'm digging through my potatoes because I want to get the lesser nice pieces and save some of the nicer ones for the top. Okay, that's good enough. And then I'm going to put about half of my cheese sauce in there. like so spread that around more potatoes those are nicer pieces I want to save those for the top I'm looking for a lot of like regular sized pieces for the top these smaller pieces I don't care about That's good enough there. I'm going to put the rest of my sauce in there. Spread that around. And then using my nicer pieces, I'm going to scallop the top. Just finishing up here. And let's see, I'll put one slice on top. All right. And I only had one little slice of potato left over. This one actually came out pretty well as far as using all those potatoes. All right. Now, this is my remaining cheese out of that cup and a half of cheese. I'm going to sprinkle this over the top. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. I don't want to smother the top with cheese. I did take that one center slice out. I didn't like how it looked in there. Just being a little fussy. In the meantime, I've been heating my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees Celsius, with a rack in the upper third of the oven. I'm going to cook this in the upper third 
because that'll help with the baking and this is going to bake for one hour another reason why I prefer not to use that mandoline I was cleaning it and I cut myself that's why I'm wearing this rubber glove it's a band-aid on there and it's a small cut but it's annoying but I had to wash dishes and I didn't want to get my hand in dishwater Anyways, what I really wanted to talk about is that because there is no one classic cast in concrete recipe for scalloped potatoes, there's a lot of variations. You saw me use cheddar cheese. You could use Swiss cheese in there if you wanted to. I use Gruyere cheese in another dish that I did, the um, Gratin Dauphinois. You could put onions, sliced onions in with your potatoes. I did that when I did a potatoes au gratin dish. You could use slices, chopped up slices of ham or better yet, prosciutto. I saw Julia Child slice up some sausages and put the sausage meat in with her potatoes. There's a lot that you can do with these dishes. So have fun, make it the way you want it. Here it is, fresh from the oven, hot and bubbly. And what I'm looking for, I like to check the internal temperature. I want an internal temperature of at least 185 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 85 to 93, higher is better. And that would tell me whether the potatoes are done or not. I need to get that glove off. What have I got here? Look at that, plenty, 210, 211 degrees. That's fine. So those potatoes are tender all the way through. I'm going to let this rest now for 10 to 20 minutes because there's still going to be heat migrating toward the center. That, that baking dish is hot. And then we'll be able to taste it and see what it tastes like. Oh, and one thing before I forget. Um, after about 45 minutes, I started watching the oven closely to make sure that it wasn't going to brown too rapidly on top. If you find that it does start to brown too quickly, you can put a sheet of foil on it and that'll slow down the browning. One step left to do. This has been sitting for a while. It's cool enough that I can handle it by those handles on the side. I'm gonna take a nice piece for myself. Put some on a plate and see what that tastes like. Okay, I can't wait to see what I've got here. Here goes. Potatoes are cooked to perfection. Very tender. Just a light flavor of the cheddar cheese. It's not an overpowering flavor. I was afraid it might be too strong, but it's not at all. That cream sauce is very mild. Mm. Those are really good scalped potatoes. So, excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy my authentic scalloped potatoes. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.